Hey everybody, and uh, welcome to another uh, lecture on iOS. Uh, okay, the topic of this lecture is going to be how to handle Swift in uh, how to handle JSON data in Swift 4. Now, there is a, quite a bit of difference between JSON 3 and JSON 4 and how to handle uh, sorry Swift 3 and 4 and how to handle JSON data. In Swift 4, it's easier, but if you haven't done it before, it's kind of confusing. So I'm gonna give you a different scenario and we're gonna look at different scenarios of uh, JSON data and how we handle those JSON data in, in, uh, in Swift. We will start with a simple JSON object. This is a file, we've created a file in the, we have a single view project, nothing in it is empty, it just has these JSON data, you can create your own JSON files or bring them from outside to test it, or you can just create, you do file and then you do new. Uh, then you go file here, others at the end, empty, and then you just give it a name and all you do at the end, just give it a name JSON and now you can type your JSON data, okay? And I have a JSON file. Okay, I have one, some already created, so I have a JSON object. And then what is a JSON object? A JSON object, it, it's a simple, all it is, it's just a, a bracket, curly brackets, an attribute, a value, attribute and a value, attribute and a value. In JSON, you can have different uh, data types. You can have strings, doubles, integers, boolean, nil, all kind of arrays, all those kind of data. But this one is pretty straightforward, just a string and a double. We'll start with this example. The next example will be a little bit more complex. We have uh, more attributes, but we have an array of objects and I'll show you how to handle that. Uh, we have another one, array and an object inside an object. So we have an embedded an object and the last one, which is very common, is that you actually have an array of objects, all right? So we'll start with the simple one. Once we learn the basics of how to read data, adjacent data, and how to decode it, the rest of it becomes a standard. It's just making sure that you follow the same format. I have in my view controller, I've already created um, the steps. Usually these are the steps that you, you, that you do with, to read and process JSON data. First, you create a structure that is similar to handle the JSON object, and this structure should be similar to what you have uh, uh, defined in your JSON data. I have a function that we will call, it's called example one. This is your first example. And in that function, I have listed the steps that we're going to do. We will get the data from the file, create a decoder object, JSON decoder, and then we have some spinning here, and then we have, and then decode the data and process the data. That's straightforward. This is what you do in general when you are handling JSON data. I have a function that we will be calling multiple times. This function, all you do is that you send it a file name and give you back a data if it is valid, okay? If you give it a valid file name and that file name exists. The data that we're defining a variable called data, this is what we'll send back. This is to get the path, okay? The URL for that file, you give it the name, the extension JSON, like that we have in here, JSON. We try to read it, if there are no error, if there's error reading it, you will catch an error. Otherwise, you send us back the data. All right? So that is the overall process. Okay, so we'll start with the first step. What's the first step? The first step, you should be familiar with the data, the data that you're receiving. This data has four attributes, uh, string, 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 and then double. So what do we do? We go back to the view controller and then we create a structure. What is a structure? A structure is similar to a class. It's very common in uh, Swift 4. It's used a lot in Swift 4, especially to hold data. Okay, so I'm gonna define a structure. We're gonna call the structure employee. This structure has a type and it's decodable, okay? 
decodable is a keyword, and uh, that is what makes it, it, uh, it tells the compiler that or the application that I'm going to decode the data into this structure. All right, and it had re it, it adhere to the decodable protocol. So if I go in this here inside that structure, what do we define? I define those, those four, vari four variables: name, and then it's a string. The next one was variable, a var, and it was age. And again, it was a string. And then var, and it was, uh, we have department. Of course, age could have been integer, but we left it at that. Okay. And the, uh, let me just make it end here. And then we'll change the JSON data. Okay. And then we have, um, we have department, it's a string. And then we have var again, and we have, uh, what do we have here? Salary, and then it's double. And just to make sure I got the names right, all you do, first of all, we're gonna make that as an integer, delete that. I'm gonna copy these and put them next to my view controller here, my structure, so I can see the names are correct. Name, age, department, and salary. This is critical because if you, put a, a field name here that does not exist in here, your application will crash. It will say, I'm looking for a key, but that key is not in your data, all right? So I'm gonna delete that, and since we know that is correct. So that is your first step. Your first step is to define a structure that matches your data uh, formats, your, object your object's definition in the JSON data, all right? This is my object, here's the definition of it, and this is my structure that will hold that data. Okay, the key is make sure it is decodable. Now, in the file, in the example, the function that reads is gonna read the data, we're gonna call that function first, which is read file. I need to give it the file name. Now, the file name is called employee, Okay, no need for JSON and it's a string because the extension is already mentioned in the URL, you notice here, with the extension, JSON is already mentioned. Now, reading the file, we might get a null or we might actually get data. So what we need to do, we need to say, if, uh, let me just put that underneath it here. Uh, uh, just delete that. Okay, so if, data equal reading that file and the potential is that if let data equal data, if let data equal reading the file, what are the possibility? It means that I'm gonna either get nil or I'm gonna get the value. If we get a value, I'm gonna do the following steps, all these steps, all right? If I don't get a value, I say you can print saying else. If you want to say else here, problem reading the file, okay? Print. Reading the file. Okay, and if there's an exception, we should be able, we should catch it below. All right, but just to make sure, we have an else statement. So if the data was correct, if we got some data, and this is the same structure that you use, if you're getting a data from a web service, this is what you would do again. You call a service a session task, and then you get back data, and then if the data is not nailed, then you do the following steps. What do we do? First, we need to create a decoder object. How do you do that? So you say let decoder equal JSON uh, decoder or JSON decoder, right? Um, JSON uh, decoder, all right? So that is first step. After third step, which is after you, uh, you receive the decoder object, okay? So the first thing is that we, we uh, we create the object, the decoder. This is the class that takes the data and convert it into JSON. Inside of it, there is actually a function called, that's your next step, 
a function that is called what says let result equal to what uh, try okay because this might fail all right because uh, I'll, I'll show you without the try first and then we'll do it uh, decoder and then what do you do inside that there is a function called decode you see that what do you decoding you're giving it the class or the structure name this is the structure name employee this is the one that will be decoding the data into so i will put that in here that self create the object an instance of it and then the data that we're trying to convert what data that we're trying to convert this data that we read from the file so here you will put the data that you're trying to convert okay oops uh, data okay now you will get an error here you see that this function actually throws an exception so you need to be able to handle that exception how do you handle exceptions we do catch and try how do you do catch and try in uh, in um, in swift you could do it here at the beginning or you could do it here i'm going to do it at the beginning all right so i'm going to say do the following all the way to here all right and if there is a problem i want to catch it it's a little confusing with all of these error these brackets but i'm going to catch this error and i'm going to do something with this error i'm going to say print error and then i'm going to say equal the error object that we received from the catch or the throw okay okay let me just put a space here so you can see what we're talking about so a little bit more complex now but you say do because this this statement requires you uh try and catch do the following if there's an error here or here or the next line we want to catch that error and then we're printing it this what where, where did this happen this happened inside the if data was not null it was not nil right all right i'm just making the code look a little bit better okay and if there's an this catch goes with this do this is with the catch okay and this else is with the f at the beginning on top okay you know it's a little bit confusing but if you do it properly you indent it properly it should be fine okay so this one still not done because we're going to say try to do the following try to decode the data into a structure called employee now if it sucks if it failed it will go to the catch if it succeed it goes to the next statement and what is the next statement process the data all we're going to do in this example just printed it out so how do you print it out you just say print for example say employee name employee name and then equal and then we're going to get it from where we're going to get it from the result dot and i'm going to do that so we get it probably better and i just do this here so we say result dot what name because we have an attribute called name if you print the age you do the same thing all the attributes not available should be available in this object okay okay and then here's the next one and then this is not name we're going to say salary for example and then result dot salary okay so now let's try it and see what we get command b 
and I'm gonna we got an error here. Why do we have an error? Okay, command B again. And we will do this just to see the result. And then what do we have? If we run it. See, you got the name and then the salary. So that worked. Okay. I'll do one more thing to show you the possible error. We talked about if you uh, looking for something age, for example, I made a mistake. I didn't put an E in here and I hit command B and then I ran it. And let's see what happens now. What you'll get, you'll get an error. Remember I told you about this? It says, now, wait a minute, you're trying to decode, a, you're trying to code a key called AG here, but the AG does not exist in the data you, you, that you read from the file. So it's very critical that you know the structure of your data that is coming from in JSON or coming from the server. All right, let me repeat what we've done. We have a simple JSON object, attribute, value, attribute, value, brackets, bracket. We have it stored in a file. We go back to the view controller. In the view controller, we have a file, we have a, a, a general utility functions that we're gonna use over and over again. We read the file, or it could be going to a server, bringing data from a server. You will get data if the data is valid or if this, uh, the session is valid, the uh, URL and you found the data, try to read it. You, write, you found the file, try to read it, return the data. In here, we check in this example called exa function example one. In this one, we will check to see if we got the data. Uh, if we have some data to process, otherwise we print an error. If we do, we have a block, catch and try block. In here, we have the decoder is the actual object class that actually helped me convert data into uh, a structure in this application. So it looks for the, it converts the JSON data into a structure that we have. This is the function that does that. An employee is a structure that holds all the attributes that are defined. We have a problem here, we didn't fix that. Has all the attribute that we, that, uh, that uh, are defined in the JSON object that we're trying to read. And uh, if it was successful and decoded it properly, JSON data is in the proper format, commas are, I mean, everything is correct. Then you read it and then you process the data. That is in a summary, that's a summary of what we have done. It took a longer than what we, a little bit longer than what we, you know, uh, what we thought, but it's okay because there's a lot of steps that we explain. In the next example, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, see you in the next video.